Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 23rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A group that identifies itself as the Turkish crime family apparently got a hold of a large number of Apple iCloud credentials. They claim to have about 600 million username and passwords and 200 million of them they verified as working and not being protected by two-factor authentication. Now, the Turkish crime family here is taking a little bit of different approach on the idea of ransomware. Instead of sending ransom notes to individual users that are affected, they sent their ransom note to Apple and are demanding 150000 dollars in order to not go out and delete all the devices linked to these Apple accounts. Now it's pretty hard not to link your Apple device to an iCloud account. You don't necessarily have to allow logins via iCloud or having the device erased via iCloud. But in particular, the later is a common security feature in order to prevent your data from falling in the wrong hands once a device has become stolen or lost. Your best bet at this point is probably to enable two-factor authentication for your iCloud account and you may want to change your password but not really sure how much that matters. It's not really clear where they got the data from. So whether these are passwords that leaked from other sources like other leaks that just happen to work for iCloud as well because users reused passwords or if they got phished. That's another common source for these passwords in particular for iCloud and lastly whether or not they got leaked from Apple itself but at this point there is no indication that this happened. Another way to protect yourself of course may also be to create an offline backup of your device in case it does get erased via iCloud you still have that offline backup. Robert Lee and Ben Miller from Tragos, an industrial control system security firm, have done an interesting study looking at public data to see how prevalent ICS, industrial control system, intrusions actually are. So one thing, for example, they did is they looked at samples being submitted to VirusTotal to see if any of them are actually related to ICS and particular tailored ICS attacks. What they found is that particular samples actually that specifically attack Siemens controllers and are installing Siemens fake firmware on these controllers have been submitted to VirusTotal and the like multiple times over the last four years from at least 10 different environments. They also, and that's probably less a surprise if you ever looked at some of these samples in VirusTotal, found that many non-malicious but probably somewhat confidential pieces of software have been uploaded to these tools and may have been identified as malicious even though they're not. The big problem here is that generic tools like VirusTotal, they're really targeting mostly desktops, in some cases server environments, but industrial control systems with the unique kind of software they're using are often not really well understood by these commodity tools. And Trent Micro came across an interesting piece of malware. It's a variety of WinT or WinNTI and uh, well it uses GitHub as part of its command and control infrastructure. I'm not really surprised we have seen pretty much any website that allows users to edit content being used that way. Same with GitHub. GitHub of course allows you to host files and these files can be abused as a command and control mechanism. The difficult part, of course, from a defender's point of view is that sites like GitHub are often whitelisted, that you're not looking very closely at traffic to these sites just because uh, they're commonly used for non-malicious purposes. 
And about two weeks ago, a vulnerability was found in LibPurple. LibPurple is a library being used by various instant messenger programs in order to support different instant messaging protocols. And one of these pieces of software is Adium. Adium is probably the most popular multi-protocol instant messaging software on OS X. And yes, it's still vulnerable to this bug because apparently ADM hasn't updated lip purple yet and you have to update it via ADM. Sadly, it looks like the developers at this point are somewhat non-responsive. So we'll see how this goes, but uh, be careful for now with ADM. This particular vulnerability does essentially rely on an XML parser issue and uh, can be exploited against OS X. There is no obvious countermeasure or mitigating control that you could easily apply in this case, particular since a lot of the traffic, of course, in modern instant messengers is going over SSL. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.